Sewing stretch is quite tricky because your fabric doesn't stay in place, it moves around. So you've got some fabrics that stretch both ways, so they are four-way stretch. You've got some fabrics are very, very thin, okay, like this one, really stretchy. So it's really important. If you stretch that, you'll lose your design. Then you've got fabric that's shiny and very, very slippery, really difficult to deal with. You don't want to damage that fabric. And then you've got heavy stretch. It just is so slinky, so soft, really nice. I'm going to show you how shorten a t-shirt. It's a regular stretch. You've got a double stitch on the front and inside you've got a sort of a zigzag, haven't you? Now they use a special type of machine to get that effect on the back and that's a cover stitch machine. So it's not quite an overlocker, it's an advance from an overlocker in that it gives you the effect of stitching on the front and it catches the bobbin loop between the rows of stitches. I'm going to remove this hem. You've got two options, a rotary cutter. Most people would say is the easiest um, option because it keeps your fabric flat. The other option is a pair of scissors like this. So they're designed so that they sit against the table so they're flat like that. And you can hold your scissors so that the fabric isn't going to be lifted off the table as you cut. So that helps control the fabric. Now there are a few patterns here. We've got leotards, um, tops and leggings, another leotard there, more leggings, ballerina outfits, bikinis and sarongs and another swimming costume with a bikini. These are all going to need a stretch fabric and if you're dancing, if you're swimming, if you want lingerie, you want something that is going to stretch and it's going to sit against your body and move with your body. You're going to exert some stress on the stitches so you really don't want them to pop. So let's show you how to do that in today's video. We want to talk about needles. We want to make sure our sewing machine is going to be able to cope with the thread. Now, you can see here, if I zoom in, that that thread I've been using with a universal needle has started to fray. So it's really important we use the right needle. So we're going to swap the needle out. We want to make sure we use the correct needle for the fabric that we're dealing with. Now, if we're going to sew on a stretch fabric, um, which has a four-way stretch, we want to use a stretch needle. Okay, so that's something like this one. That's a super stretch. Now, the thing about the Janome ones, they're extremely overpriced and there's nothing super stretch about them. They just are for a four-way stretch fabric. So you don't have to get these. Just make sure you buy a stretch needle. They're exactly the same. Another thing I don't really like about this amongst the price is that these are organ needles. Organ needles tend to bend. So when you're stitching and you've got a bent needle in there, you can't tell that you're skipping stitches because of a poor quality needle. So people tend to think it's something they're doing wrong. So I tend to stay clear of organ needles for that reason. Okay, so let me just explain what these needles all have in common. You'll see the numbers 130705 on all of these needles. And then you also see the letter H. What happened many years ago is Faf and Viking and Singer used the code 130 on their domestic sewing machines. So if it was an industrial factory machine, it would have a different code. And for you to know that you're buying the right needle for your machine, they use the code 130 on theirs. Other companies use the code 705. And then sometime in the 50s, all of the companies sort of got together and realised that it's confusing. So they designed a needle that would work on both machines. So they started producing sewing machines with this code. Okay, so H just stands for household needle. Now where here we have an S, that S tells us it's for a stretch fabric. Okay, so it's a stretch and it's a twin needle there. This is a universal needle. It's not suitable for stretch. So we know now that the tip is going to be nice, sharp and pointed. On the stretch, it's going to have a little bit of a ball point at the end. Now, when we look at the jersey needle here, that has a much more rounded def definition to its tip. And that's just so it won't pierce the fabric. So as you can see, using a universal needle, has frayed my thread, which is no good. So if you want to get the effect that I've got on this t-shirt, so we've got a twin needle 
effect on the front and the loops are going to be catching on the back. This is a cover stitch machine finish. We're going to do this on a sewing machine. A sewing machine will stitch the two rows of stitching if we use a twin needle. Now a twin needle comes in a packet just like this. They're usually on their own um, and you can see that this is a four millimeter gap between the two needles with a 75 needle in each one. 75 means it's 0.75 of a millimeter thick each of those needles and the distance between the two prongs the two needles is four millimeters which you can see there. Now let's move on to the subject of thread. Do we really need to use a stretch thread? Now we've got Gutterman and Metzler and even Coates who produce um, different types of stretch. We've got lots in the range but when I've spoken to people about it, when I've spoken to companies, it's really for high intense fabric, not really everyday clothes. So it's an expensive thread at no great advantage to the regular home sewer. So if I were you, I would just leave them and stick with a regular cotton. It's a cotton t-shirt. I'm going to use a cotton thread. Savile Row are happy with coat spoon and so am I. All right, so here we go. Here's our t-shirt and Mm, you know it's it's been twisted over where it's um when when it's been laid out when the fabric's been stitched out um and cut if you hold under the armpits you can see if the side stitches are twisting like this you know when the pat pattern cutter was cutting out the fabric he or she didn't lay the pattern exactly right on the knit fabric. So you need to make sure you relax your fabric when you plan to cut it out, okay? So sometimes this might cause problems when we're snipping the hem away, okay? So all we're gonna do, just for the sake of uh, the exercise, is we're going to straighten out the hem, so everything's now matching the side seams on the side and we're going to cut the hem so if you have a long ruler that's super isn't it i can just lay that on there and go whoop right across you mark your fabric for the person who you're altering this for you can mark it at whatever point you want to let's say we're going to do this at five i'm going to make sure i mark the bottom of this hem at five centimeters okay i can whiz right across with my rotary cutter or i can cut this out with my scissors so let me show you the advantage of having this straight angle Do the last bit with the rotary cutter. I'm going to show you the difference. Okay, you can see with the scissors, I'm not perfectly straight. I get a jagged bits, which if I'm very, you know, I'm very practiced at this, but if I wasn't very practiced at this, I could get really bad jaggedy bits. With the rotary cutter over here, you see how smooth that's come out. So you can see why people find using the rotary cutter much easier um, and gives a finish to your cutting so that you can end up working with a good finished cut. Now, if I start to stretch this, this is our way. So if I stretch this, did you see what happened? Straight away, that fabric rolled in keep that all nice and flat we don't need to add any glue all those hemmets and bond it bonder webs and things like that that's a waste to the environment it's a waste 
we don't need to spend money on. Okay, just don't stretch your fabric. You stretch it, it rolls up. It makes it almost impossible to deal with. Now, in order to use our twin jersey needle, we're going to need two lots of thread feeding through the machine. So I'm going to choose two colours. I'm going to go for a nice pink and a lovely greeny blue teal. I'm going to feed the first one in on this machine. I can place a spindle just there. Make sure I've got my thread stopper so, so it doesn't fly away. Okay, right. And then it's going to follow the thread map as if I only had one thread in the machine. Whoops. Okay, I'll just leave that there for a moment. We'll change the needle in a minute. Again, put the second thread in. Again, we need to stop so the thread doesn't come flying off. Follow the map, the thread map, in exactly the same way. Bring that thread back down as well. So feed them through the uh, thread map as you would. Now I'm going to remove that needle that's in there. And we have our special twin needle. It's got the flat at the back. So we're going to place that in. Now here, it doesn't matter which needle has which colour. That's entirely up to me. I can have the blue on the top and the pink on the bottom. So just before you start, make sure your twin needles fit inside the foot. We're going to choose a twin needle stitch. So just a regular stitch. A good length. So I'm going to choose 2.6. We need to make sure that we're going to measure an accurate hem because what happens, we want the top stitching to be twin needle and underneath for it to be the loopy design. So what we're going to do is we're going to fold the fabric over like this and then stitch on the top. Now the only problem is I can't see the edge. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna measure our hem to a two centimeter line. That's how much fold I want at the back of my T-shirt. So uh, a couple of marks there. Just make sure I've got that straight with a ruler. Follow that along. I'm gonna fold the fabric inwards. So I've done this. I've done this on the right side. So you can see the crease on the outside of your T-shirt. And pop a few pegs on. I don't have special stretch pins in, not many people do, so I'm going to use pegs in this case. Okay, so we're going to place this up against the wall of the magnet. So if you're using a magnet, don't be worried, you can go and watch my magnet video. I show you how it works and it's pretty safe on electric machines. And go slow. Start off slow. Let's lock those stitches. Lock those stitches to make sure your stitching doesn't come undone at the top. And stay pretty slow. You can see I've not gone all the way to the maximum speed of the machine. And make sure that we're keeping that fabric steady. I'm using my fingers. I'm following it gently. I walk my fingers along the fabric. When I get to the end, I'm going to lock the stitches again. And that's going to hold the thread secure for me. So use your hand wheel now. So when you release the fabric, use your hand wheel to release the thread. And it will loosen it up for you. Snip that away. Whoops. Snip that away. And you're going to get a finish like this. So it doesn't look like an overlock or a cover stitch finish. But this is the best you're going to get. And that's pretty good and it gives a good stretch. Now it's your turn, have a go. Comment below, let me know how you get on. Make sure you subscribe and like, and I will see you soon. Take care.